I'm Russ Kickle, and if you ever wanted to see an in-place tank upgrade, then this episode of American Reef is for you. So the tank we're going to upgrade today is that Mike Paletta sunlit tank. If you've been following along in the video series, the last episode, what Mike tried to do is basically take his rockscape, lower it three to six inches, giving his corals more room to grow. Here we are three to four months later and the corals took advantage of that you know, empty space and now they're back to the top again. So his next step, basically change the tank out. Now, if you haven't seen those videos and you want to kind of see basically the, the sunlit progression from the beginning, just search for sunlit on the YouTube channel. I try to title or put sunlit in every title of that Mike Paletta sunlit tank. So you can kind of see the progression of how it started and where it's at today. Uh, you can also do that on iTunes as well. Right, if you're new to reef keeping and you're looking for some more how-to videos, i got hundreds of them out there, uh, you'll want to look at the Reef Tutor video series. Just go to AmericanReef.com one word and uh, from there just click shows and you'll see the reef tutor video series click there and you can see again hundreds of how-to videos on keeping the uh, saltwater and coral reef aquariums and if you're looking for American Reefs HPD same thing AmericanReef.com or you can actually go to AmericanReefHPD.com and it'll take you to the, uh, the HPD store and then from there, again, you know, I've been trying to uh, look for some smaller companies, right, who are proud of the goods and services they, uh, they offer. And again, if you can deliver them through the internet, send me an email because, again, my goal is to try to help promote your business. And again, kind of level that playing field between the small family-owned business and the big kind of corporations, right, where the small guys don't necessarily have the national presence. I want to help give them that presence. <music> So as you see, Lucy calmed down now <laughs> because we're doing something fun. Lucy loves us when we do this kind of stuff. Sure she, does. she does. She wants to be in the big tank. <laughs> so because these corals have grown so amazingly over the last six months, I can either drop it down even further and basically have coral sitting on the bottom of the tank, which probably isn't the best looking thing, or what we're going to do is we're going six inches higher. Yes, right, that's right, boys and girls. <laughs> we're going to a bigger tank, something we all love in our hearts and never do enough of is we go from a 90 gallon to a 120. It's six inches higher. I'm also planning on tilting the rock a little bit so that you have a better view, because right now it's only nice from the top. I mean, I got this tank because I wanted to maximize sunlight, and even though it's now early or late fall, and I'm not getting as much sunlight in here as I got in the past. The corals are still growing remarkably well. Everything's doing great. So it's time to do this. So we're gonna spend hopefully two or three hours. Worst case, six or eight hours. <laughs> but if, if everything goes right, there should be a relatively smooth transition. What I have are roughly 90 gallons of uh, holding capacity here. And I also have uh, another 30 gallons in buckets. <laughs> And I have 50 gallons of extra water made up to make up for whatever's here. That water will go in first, then I'll put the rocks in, then I'll fill it back up with the water from the tank. So I'll do a massive water change as well. So everything should be good and easy to do from here on out. So this is where we're starting. I've already turned off the flow in the tank. Next step is just to take the lights off the tank. And I'm just gonna go step by step taking everything apart. So it should be fairly straightforward and easy. Famous last words. <laughs> so while you're doing that, let's do some, we'll do some Q and A's, right? To, to bring everybody up to speed. Okay. So to your point, last time we saw this beautiful tank during the night and everything was just glowing and growing. 
Yeah, between the reef brights and the castles and the sunlight, I mean, the colors have really picked up. The growth has been exponential. I mean, I've had soft coral tanks before, yeah, basically my whole right. life. I've never had this kind of growth this fast because uh, nothing in here was put in more than like this size and most of them are now this big. Uh, there's a clam in the middle of the tank that's doing remarkably well. The affilias, the bubble coral was about a quarter of the size. I mean, when it fully expands, it fills up that entire space. Uh, this uh, nephthia has grown from just one stalk into multiple stalks. Uh, obviously, there, as always, there's lots of fish in here. So it's, uh, from my point of view, a really nice tank. Plus, I can sit in the sun, sunroom. If there's a lightning storm, a uh, snowstorm, or just to relax and look at a, a nice tank. So I'm looking forward to see how much better a right. six inch higher tank looks. Okay, so that, that's what kind of gets me, okay, when you when we had the first video of you dropping it down. Right. right? And you, you thought you were gonna get multiple months out of that. I've gotten roughly three. And they <laughs> right. grew to the surface, uh, actually two. Right. They've been at the surface now for a month. It took me a while to have enough time to do this because I've been traveling a lot. I mean, Italy and England, if you can go to both places and see amazing tanks, those are two places to go. Actually, everywhere in Europe is, but those are right. two of my favorites now. But it's just remarkable how well everything has grown and done in this tank. So my question is, what makes you think you're not going to see in three months from now the same exact issue? I don't know, but it will be, they will be even bigger. So then what I'm probably going to end up doing is cutting stuff and getting rid of it and okay. starting smaller, <laughs> okay. which I don't like to do. It's been nice to let this stuff grow. Right. And that tank looks so much bigger than this tank. Yeah. I know I'm going to have some time. Plus it's the dead of winter, so I don't expect as fast a growth. But it'll be interesting to see if I get as fast a growth that sunlight isn't the crucial thing. Okay, I won't interrupt anymore. Okay, so now next step is to turn off all the power. Okay, yeah, so I said I wouldn't interrupt anymore. Let's interrupt. Okay, so again, your grand scheme here is you're not messing with the bottom. Nope. All you're doing. All I'm doing is taking everything off the top, clean, taking all the fish, corals, rocks out, filling it back up, putting it back in. With the same water that you're pulling out. Sa some of the same water, 50 right. gallons of fresh from downstairs. This is 90, so 30 gallon, 20 gallons more from downstairs. And now if you had everything hard plumbed in, right, yep. this, this would be a little more of an issue. Yeah, but since this is just a CPR overflow mm -hmm. instead of being drilled, and this just comes on the back for a sea swirl and moves, and it's on a soft hose, which I hope I have enough of, so that may be an issue, and I should have enough for, to bring it up six inches. Right, that's what I was gonna ask. Did you measure beforehand? No, this mm -hmm. is, we're flying by the seat of our pants like we most people typically do. <laughs> Not the smartest way, but it's, it's our way. So as far as, uh, again, prep work and things of that nature, you didn't do anything else to the tank, right? No. In other words, you, all you did is said, make sure I got a lot of clean towels and plastic. That yep, one. that's the main thing. Stuff to move the water, hoses, buckets, and you're not worried about the tank recycling, right? No, because I'm not changing the live rock or anything else. Right. Okay. Okay, Mike, so there's a question while you're draining that. Yes. Do you care how long your corals are kind of like out of water? Uh, I try to keep it at a minimum, obviously, but I haven't found that it's as big an issue as I used to think it was. So define that, right? Uh, I've had them, like my SPS I've had out for 20, 25 minutes and didn't have any oral issues. Mm -hmm. Not the smartest thing I've done, mm -hmm. but... And now softies, do you have any of the, uh, the polyps? No, I don't have any polyps though that I have to worry about. It. Actually, there's some, but it's minimal. Yeah, those little salt crystals when they dry. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There it is. There I it was. It. Did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> That's pretty good. Fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, now I gotta clean that window. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Is there stuff underneath it? Yes, there is. Okay. Oh, we got fish. It's hard in there. There we go. There we go. You saved the fish. And what we're going to do mm -hmm. is we're going to do this to clean off the rock. Okay, Michael, you got like 28 minutes into this already, right? Yeah, so this is going way smoother than I had hoped. That's what I was going to ask. So I know something bad is about to happen. So. <laughs> so what are some of the surprises as far as, because you were talking about sponges. Ooh, one of the surprises is the smell I just got, which is of hydrogen sulfide, oh, which right. I didn't expect. Yeah. Sweet. Two is how f big some of these fish are that I put in his little tiny things, particularly the uh, convict cardinal mm -hmm. fish. I put them in, they were an inch and right. a half. Now they're close to four inches, which is bigger than their typical maximum size. Well, let's take a second and talk about sulfide. I mean, you, normally you get that when you have your sands and- your Yeah, there's nothing in here that should do that. Right. But there's so much detritus in here because that was the one thing I really wasn't happy with was the flow in this tank. And that's one of the things I wish to improve because one of the things that I couldn't do with just having one drain on it, I couldn't crank this up full. Right. Now I'm gonna crank it up full. I'm gonna put some bigger Tunzi power heads in here. Right. And I'm gonna put something bigger on the bottom to really get things cranking. It'll be interesting to see if, again, if that works because you're adding more water volume now, right? Yeah. So, so the, um, where do you think the sulfide smell came from? Uh, there was a, a pile of detritus over in one corner that I moved when I was getting a fish, and that's where it came so, from. Huh, interesting. And now, as far as your fish, instead of using a net, you're using a, you know, again, a two-quart or whatever kind of container. Yep. What's the thought process behind that? I try to catch them underwater even though they're going into the plastic but this is a little less abrasive because it's nice and smooth inside mm -hmm. and actually we got everything out already which is pretty good including an old rusty razor blade nothing better than that okay? <laughs> to add that little bit of aluminum and the stainless steel that you want <laughs> sad thing in life. Jawbreaker mushrooms are selling for $500 to $1,000 a piece because they grow so slow. Mushrooms like this blue one 
which obviously aren't quite as nice, uh -huh. are worth about a dime because this thing reproduces like 50 mushrooms a month. I'm throwing mushrooms right, away. Right, so right. it's amazing how the mushrooms know which ones are the most valuable so they don't reproduce. <laughs> so we have this. So let's go back to that sponge conversation. Okay. Okay, so you were saying you were really happy when you found those rocks with sponges. Right. Tell them why. That basically just shows how healthy the, the tank is based on how many sponges you have growing. If you have a lot of sponge growth, typically means the, the tank is cycled well, the nutrient levels are good. That's why in the uh, 90 gallon Elos tank, I've not been happy with it because I started off with dead dry rock. And Sanjay and I, and actually when I was in Europe, I talked to a couple people there that also started with dead dry rock and we all had the same problem. The corals would do okay for two, four, six weeks and then they would just fade and die. Sanjay's mm -hmm. still having that in his Montipper tank. I had that in there, but anemones and soft corals do great, but SPS, there's just something missing. Right. And we all came to the same conclusion. It's because we did dead rock. There wasn't the bacteria. There wasn't the uh, sponges and there wasn't the nutrients that you get from real live rock. Right. But I also found out that there's a ton of bristle worms in here that I really don't like. <laughs> and we remember last time. Yes. Bristle worms. How much fun we had with them. Yeah. So you put a towel on the bottom there and your goal is? Right. Just to tilt the water down to one side so I can get all the gunk out of it easy. Right. And I'm going to go grab a razor blade real quick to clean off the bottom. Amazing how much gunk is accumulated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, it's a week overdue for the water change when I take all the gunk out. But I only, as I said, I've only been doing a 10% water change on this tank a month. Correct. And so now with those sponges, back onto that topic, you're gonna take the, the sponges out of here and put them in that Elos tank? Yeah. Because there's other sponges in, in the rock that I didn't see. So I'm not, I don't have to populate it, but I wanna try and populate the Elos tank with sponges. I'm also putting in live rock that I have curing. So I'm gonna, see if that indeed was the cause, which I'm assuming it was, because when five people agree on something, which is probably one of the rarest things in this hobby. smart enough to get a lot of tubing in a pump. <laughs> that goes to that planning thing, right? Yeah, plan better, but I need to bulk up anyway. That's what I was going to say. Winter's here. Uh, that's right. Instead of doing the, the push-ups you've been doing. And you that. So as you're dumping the water, did you do anything to clean the inside of the tank or anything Yeah, like I that? cleaned all the dust out. Yeah. There'll be dust on top. I expect that. It'll go over the overflow into the bottom. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. But you, you didn't use any kind of whatever? No cleaners, nothing. I never use cleaners on yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, when I clean the glass on the outside, I use a mixture of Dawn dishwashing detergent, uh, white vinegar, and RODI water. And that's a video that either is out or soon to be uh, out. Okay. Well, sure. we never know. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's the easiest way to clean a tank and not wipe out the tank. There it is. And there's no scratches on this tank, so I'm quite happy. It fun. does look tremendously larger yeah. than the old tank. But it's actually only six inches, but it's hard to believe that this is six inches, but we're not gonna go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Why do you have a sock at the end of that, Mike? Uh, it's cold out and they want to keep warm. Ah, uh, makes sense. Huh. Actually, it's a sock full of floss because mm -hmm. Despite my best efforts of keeping this water clean, when he took all the rocks out, you find out how much detritus there was in the tank, which is actually rather astounding. So I have cleaning out or trying to get out as much as I can. And when we take the sock out, it'll be amazing how dirty it is. Because I mean, looking in the bottom, how much detritus has settled out. So you, you got a sock with some filter floss. Yep. And I have the hose into the filter floss. So the filter floss is cleaning out as much as possible, so I, I don't really see a lot of dirt coming out of the sock. So so far, I'm fairly happy. Oh, yeah. And the corals are and the clam are finally going to be underwater and hopefully yeah. another minute because they weren't very happy being out to dry. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be interesting as we discuss to see how I basically shifted things from side to side because I want a better view of things looking up rather than just flat. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how everything looks. Right, right, right. Jack Bunny. <laughs> See, most hobbies aren't even old enough to even know who Jack Benny was. So. It amazes me is how big this cardinal fish got. They mm -hmm. were an inch and a half, now he's five inches. Mike, you're sweating. Yeah, we got everything in. We got everything wet. We just don't have enough water. Even though I made an extra 40 gallons, somehow it disappeared. So we're going to go mix up some fresh, which I don't like to do. But I still have some in the sump, and I can pump that up, and I'll see where I am. Mm -hmm. And always make more water than you think. I thought I did. Yeah, yeah. We didn't spill hardly any, which is always a good thing. But there's waste water. There's waste rocks. There's just always some extra bad water. <laughs> And what I'm going to do now is tighten this down. Oop. And then applies on that one. Okay, and then add, pump the water up from the bottom and see where we are water-wise. Obviously, we're going to be short, but I still have uh, five gallons downstairs and I can still mix up another 10. So I still have 15 more gallons. I mean, it's only 120, so it shouldn't be that bad. And there's still 10 gallons sitting there. All right. Okay, so we'll come back whenever it's a little higher. Doing the finishing touches, basically putting little mounts on the back so the netting will hold so the fish all don't jump out like they typically do. So hopefully that will make the tank safer. It does look much bigger. I can't wait till everything opens up to see how full it is because right now everything's closed so it looks right. bad. But I know it'll get much better by 
tomorrow or the next day. So when you do a job like this, what you have to do is be patient with it. This took us about three hours to do, which sounds like a long time, but I'm pretty happy. I was afraid it was gonna take five or six right, hours. Right, so right. anytime I can get stuff done that fast, I'm pretty happy because as we all know, nothing really happens good fast in this hobby, so. Right, right. And so then, again, the idea here was all you did is basically swapped tanks. Everything else is the same, except you cleaned a few things along the way. And I reorganized it so that I have a better view of the corals rather than just one flat, one dimensional. Now the, t the rocks tilt back a little bit so I can see the nicer things are, you know, taller things are in the back. So I've aquascaped a little bit nicer than I did before. So it's not done until the lights are on, the water's moving and everything settles in. I'll give it some time. By this time tomorrow, I'll have moved everything around to where it needs to be. Everything should have settled down and then I'll good to go with it. Right.